Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm going to show you the easiest, quickest way to install Windows 11 into your Mac Pro 5, comma 1. It literally takes three minutes. You don't need a USB thumb drive. You can do it all right from Mac OS. So let's get to it. We're going to install Windows 11 using an app called, what else? Windows Install. Brought to you by Sergi Gallen. If you use the app, please make a donation. And this is for Intel Macs and Hackintosh, and folks using OpenCore with the latest Mac OS. Today we're installing Windows 11 on my Mac Pro 5, 1. And I have an older video doing this, but I was using Rufus and it was much more complicated. This is the easiest install of Windows I've ever done. So step one, we're gonna download Windows Install and Tiny 11. The links are in the video description, just download those put Windows install in your applications folder and Tiny11 you can leave on your desktop. And Tiny11 is a shrunken down version of the full ISO of Windows 11 that you would normally get from Microsoft. And I'll explain why I'm using Tiny11 a little later. Step two is to format our target drive that we want to install Windows on. I'm going to be using a team group NVMe which is in slot 2 in my Mac Pro 5 comma one. But you can install it on a SATA drive and you could even just make a partition on a pre-existing Mac OS drive in XFAT and install Windows there. So first up, we're gonna come up and we're gonna format it in XFAT and we're just gonna call it Untitled. XFAT GUID partition and hit erase. Okay, so we're formatted in XFAT, there it is on our desktop. And now we are going to simply launch Windows install, okay? Now, first thing you gotta do is keep this utility open. I know I closed it, but you need to see where your disk, the untitled now, is located. So you come over here, it says disk one S2. So that's very important because over here we have to say disk one S2, okay? Same as that. So wherever your XFAT partition is, that's where you wanna install Windows. It's gonna make it a Windows NTFS partition. It's gonna completely erase it. Okay, so we wanna put in our administrative password where it says, please enter your password. That's like what you use to log into your Mac with. And then we're gonna drag the Tiny11 ISO file into the main window here. And you can see it says index one, Windows 11 Pro. So we need to set the index to one. If you were to drag over the whole Windows 11 installer, not Tiny11, you would get a whole bunch of different indexes on the full Windows 11 ISO file if you were to download that directly from Microsoft. And you select the version of Windows you want, like Windows Home Edition, Windows Pro Edition, and such. There's 11 of them on the regular Windows 11 installer. But I had issues with the latest Windows 11 installer, and we'll get to that in a little bit. And that's one of the reasons I'm using Tiny11. Now, here's another thing. Deactivate Windows ESP. This is important because what this does, when you're putting it on a Mac Pro 5, 1, this protects your boot ROM. Your computer will not boot into Windows if OpenCore fails or you pulled out your OpenCore drive, but you still have your Windows drive in there. You want to check that if you're installing it on a Mac Pro 5, 1. And so here we go. We're going to hit install. So the first thing it's doing is creating the NTFS partition. You saw it disappear from the desktop and then it'll reappear once the install is done. And then it's installing Windows. And it's only going to take take us under three minutes, folks. That's what's amazing. So this shrunken down version of Windows 11, Tiny 11, takes less time than if you were to install the entire regular version of Windows. And it depends on which version and how fast your hard drive is. But for me, on an NVMe, is only taking three minutes, which is pretty incredible. You know, before this app came out, you had to create a thumb drive in Windows or a virtual machine 
machine to be able to make a bootable Windows thumb drive. And you had to jump through a bunch of hoops and use Rufus, etc. But this is all within Mac OS. It removes the secure boot and the TPM just like it does with Rufus. So you can install Windows 11 on an unsupported Mac. I'm able to install Windows in three minutes. I did this on my Mac Pro 6.1, the trash can. The internal drive already had Sequoia and OpenCore on it. And then I just created an XFAT partition and I installed Windows 11. I installed actually the full version, not Tiny 11. And it just worked. I didn't know Tiny 11 existed yet. I was having issues installing the full Windows 11 version on my Mac Pro 5.1. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So I'm just gonna speed this up so we get to the end of the install. But I also wanna point out that I did try Windows 10 ISO downloaded from Microsoft and it worked fine on my Mac Pro 5.1. There's our drive, there's our EFI, it's doing its final creating a bootloader, 100% done. Two minutes and 59 seconds. <laughs> that is ridiculous. And there it is. There's our Windows install on our untitled drive, okay? So we are gonna reboot. Process is complete. Time spent three minutes to install Windows 11. Wow. Okay, we're gonna quit and we're gonna reboot and my fingers are crossed. The moment of truth, folks. It's gonna boot into OpenCore and then we're gonna select the Windows drive. Okay, this is it, folks. This is it. Don't get stuck. I can tell already. It's working. We're in. Starting services. I never got this far with the latest ISO from Microsoft. Um, I gotta figure out how to get a web browser. Oh, let's just get old Firefox. Get. Okay, so now I want to talk about some of the problems I had before I actually got this all to work. Originally, I was using the new app, Windows Install, and using the full Microsoft Windows 11 ISO file, the current one that you can download from the Microsoft website. I installed it, no problem, but every time I would go into the first boot into Windows, this is the screen that would come up. Stop code, kernel security check failure. And I tried this every way from Sunday. I could not get it to work. That's when I found Tiny11, thanks to a post by Jose on the Mac Pro Facebook users group. Thanks, Jose. That was a great tip. And it's a very unbulky version of Windows. It takes out all the Shrek that you don't need especially if you just want to use your Mac for gaming in Windows. And while this install only takes three minutes to get Windows on your drive, you still have to set up Windows and then you have to find the right drivers. Don't go install all the bootcamp drivers onto your Mac Pro 5.1 because it'll screw up the install. You'll have to start over. And I'm gonna do a follow-up video on how to get the proper drivers for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, audio, and your GPU. My Mac Pro has an RX 580. It has an upgraded Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. So bootcamp is not gonna install the right drivers for that situation. So stay tuned, I'll have a follow-up video soon. The other thing that's incredible about Windows Install, the app, is that you can make a backup of the install that you have created of Windows and then restore that right in Mac OS. So you don't have to go through the whole process of installing your drivers and go through the whole Windows Install from scratch process. Once you have a happy Windows 11 install with the drivers that you need, before you go load up all your games and things of that nature, because of course that backup is going to get much bulkier especially if you put 10 60 gig games on your windows drive so i highly recommend once you're happy with your windows 11 install make a backup with the windows install app and all you got to do is go to sergi's youtube video i'll leave the link in the description apologies if i'm not pronouncing your name right and he shows you how to backup and restore from the backup so once you got all your drivers in there you don't need to do the ISO anymore. You can just reformat your drive 
and then install your backup. And that way you don't have to install Windows from scratch and go through all those prompts and installing your drivers, etc. The app makes it super easy. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me that thumbs up. I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers, guys, and it's been what? I've been on here for 15 years or something. But you know, I'm not a regular YouTuber. But if my videos helped you out, please subscribe. Please give me the thumbs up because I'm trying to do more videos. And I will see you in the next Max Sound Solutions video.